Hey everybody, welcome to one of your virtual field trips. My name is Sergeant LaPay. I'm here at the Delaware Air National Guard Base here in Newcastle County, where the 142nd Airlift Squadron, 166th Airlift Wing operates the Flying Mighty Herks, the C-130Hs. Today we're gonna do, show you around a little bit. I had a really good video of simulator. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get that published in time for this um, and approval to do so. So you're stuck with me for a little bit of this video. You see around me, we got some of our buildings out there behind me. We got our airplanes on the flight line and they're gonna be, uh, they're gonna be flying those same airplanes we're gonna see overhead here in a little bit. As we do, just like in school, you do a lot of schoolwork, you do training, exercises to get better at school. Same thing in the military, we train to fight. So in real world situations, sometimes there are troops on the ground that can't get food, water, supplies, ammunition, it's our job in those airplanes to deliver them the cargo that they need. I'm a loadmaster and that's one of my jobs is I'm in charge of getting the parachutes right, making sure they're rigged right in the aircraft, and I'm also in charge of getting that stuff out of the airplane along with the rest of the crew to get it to the people on the ground so they can do what they need to do to sustain life and fight the battle that they're doing. Things that can be delivered are such as water, ammunition, food, and there's different ways we deliver that. Tonight is only a training mission, so they're only gonna be throwing out small training bags that we're gonna see later in this video. Um, we do training, we fly out. We basically, you see us fly over Delaware all the time. We fly down towards Dover, we head out over the coast, and we come inland in New Jersey, and we have a training drop zone that we use there. And that's where I'm getting ready to take an hour and a half drive up there. So I'm not gonna bore you with the drive. I do have a compadre coming along today, my son Gage. He's nine years the old. The coolest part of the family, of course. Oh yeah, he's the coolest one in the family. So he's gonna come along with us tonight and help a little bit when we get up there. He's done this a couple times. Also, my friend Henry will be up there with us as well. So, the military. It's got a lot of good things to it, a lot of advantage. We are different because we have a state mission as well. So there are times that if your you know, family is in need, if you're in the middle of a flood or hurricane, tornadoes as we recently had some bad weather come through or this COVID pandemic that we've had the National Guard has actually activated and been in the public helping out that's what our job is to do we sometimes defend for the country we also defend for the state the greatest state in the Union Delaware so you know today we're doing some training for things that we do more or less overseas uh, we practice this all around the country uh, so like I said, today is a little anticlimactic because the only thing coming out of the airplane is going to be a 15-pound bag of sand and a parachute. You will get to see that. We'll see it come down and we'll give you a little bit of information on the radios, different things that we use on the ground to communicate uh, with the airplanes. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and see how well they can drop. They have a, a point they're supposed to drop on and we try to get them to drop as close as they can to it. And that's what they're testing, they're training for, is to get it right on target um, to, the, uh, to what we call the PI, the point of impact. So I'm getting ready to drive up to the point of impact, and I'm going to go ahead and come back on at that point. And we're going to go over some of the other things that we do and some of the other training things we do, as well as I'm going to talk a little bit more of what being an air crew member in the Delaware National Guard means. Thanks for your attention, and look forward to seeing you in a couple minutes here. Hey kids, teachers, we're back here, up here in New Jersey at a undisclosed location, waiting on our aircraft to come overhead. We were doing a two airplane formation, it is down to one now, so it'll be a little bit shorter, a little bit quicker. A lot of times in this C-130 world, they like to do flying formation so they can get multiple uh, drops to the you know people that need the uh, things that they need, so they can drop them. I mean, you know, numerous airplanes can fly and they keep a certain distance from each other. In the airplanes, they have radar and distant meters that can tell. They can stay so many feet away. They also visually sometimes will stay away from the other aircraft and they will get the cargo on target for what they are doing. So we are up here at the drop zone and we'll be uh, radioing up to them. They'll be coming over here in a while, so it's not going to happen quite yet couple things we have going on there are different things that you mark 
your target with. I mentioned earlier, point of impact. PI, that's where they want to hit. For a daytime drop, we're using a very clear, distinct pink triangle that's facing the correct heading for which heading the airplanes are going to be coming in. Airplane now is going to be coming in. So that's what we're going to be using. It's called a RAM. Don't ask me what that stands for, but it uh, basically is a point that they are going to be looking for from the sky and they're going to come inward and they're going to try to get their load exactly over that and land as close to that as possible. Our job out here is to make sure there's no danger. I'm, I am the drop zone officer tonight. That's one of my duties um, in my career field. I'm also a load master, but tonight I'm being a drop zone officer. So I'll actually be in charge of the drop zone. If there's anything unsafe, they can't drop, that I'm gonna be notifying the aircraft that they cannot. We also are here to give them winds. Sometimes a parachute is, can be directed by winds. So we're also gonna be giving them wind readings to let them know when they drop. Sometimes they will offset to one side or the other based on the winds as they know the parachute is gonna drift a certain way depending on the wind direction. So we'll be using a wind meter for that here in a little bit as well to find out what the winds are. We don't wanna do it quite yet because it's uh, too far out from the drop. So we're gonna do it a little bit closer to the drop. Off in the distance behind me, there is a wind sock. We also sometimes use that. That is a 20 knot wind sock. It's probably hard to see in this uh, camera and this footage. Um, that is a 20 knot wind sock. So basically if that wind sock is completely straight out, the wind would be at 20 knots. Right now, it's very uh, limp and hanging down. We're probably looking at like two knots of wind right now, which is barely anything. So, I mentioned I'm a drop zone officer and what those duties are. I also am an aircraft load master on a cargo airplane, C-130. My job is to manage the weight and balance of the airplane. An airplane needs to have the proper weight and balance so it can take off properly and fly properly and get the right kind of fuel management. So once the weight and balance is correct, the pilots know that they can pull on the throttle and take that airplane. If it's too nose heavy, it's going to be hard to pull that nose up off the ground and it's going to not want to, uh, not want to get lift. If it's too tail heavy, the nose is really going to lift up and it's going to get too much lift and it could possibly not fly properly because it's going to be getting the nose up too high and they're going to have to overcompensate. And when they do that, that uses more fuel and could cause a dangerous condition. And in worst cases, the engines could actually stall if they go too far straight upward, um, you know, on the takeoff or on a landing or things of that nature. So I'm in charge of weight and balance. Also, we are in charge of the cargo coming in and out of the aircraft. We need to make sure that all the documentation is there, that, you know, if there's hazardous materials, fuels, um, oxides, gases, things that are noted. We need to know where it is, how to handle that. We also tie down cargo that's in the airplane. So if it's a, a, we load a Jeep or a Humvee, we're there to make sure it's secure. So when we take off, it's not rolling around. Uh, we also load pallets and we take people from point A to point B. Uh, we go ahead and, you know, like I said, haul vehicles. We also sometimes have a medical mission. One time I took 38 um, injured people away from a bomb site during a wartime uh, situation so our airplane could almost turn into a mobile hospital and we were able to triage our we had an aeromedical team on board we were able to triage the patients as we took them to the larger base to get properly treated those are some of the missions that we do and one thing that's kind of neat about guardsmen if you didn't know as I mentioned earlier we have a state mission we're here for the federal government we're also here to support our state because of that we're what we call citizen soldiers and we also have day jobs my day job I work at JP Morgan some people's day job the other guy I'm with he works for FedEx so we have different people around that do different jobs and that's one of the great things about the guard is you get a mix of people do so many different things in the real world and in the end they come together to train to fight and to do this great mission that we do so we're up here we'll be getting ready um we have different uh they a crew will determine what time they want to drop so they will have a tot which is time on target tot stands for time on target our first time on target tonight happens to be 2010 which for those that don't know military time which is probably a lot of people that's 8 10 in the evening so we'll be they'll be dropping it'll still be daylight we'll be able to see the airplane fly over 
We're going to go ahead and come back on the video at that point and show you that happening. I'm also going to try to attach at the end some videos of some actual real um, drops being done that are a little bit more impressive than what we're dropping tonight. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll continue there in a moment. Thank you. Back everybody. So we're here sitting here um, in the drop zone truck waiting on the airplane to come in down here in the drop zone. This came on because we should be hearing from the airplane any moment now. So we're, uh, we have a radio right here. This is our radio that we have. And we're going to be uh, listening. And if they call in, we're going to go ahead and give them the clearance that they are okay to drop their training bundle here at the drop zone. There's nothing going on out here. Just a couple deer running around, nothing uh, unsafe. So they're going to be able to drop and try to uh, land their training bundles close to the point of impact PI as possible. Uh, so I'm hoping to get that here on the radio. I'll try to stay on here and see if we get them on the radio here in the next moment or two. Um, hope everybody's doing all right through this whole pandemic thing. Glad to be doing this. I know it's been had a really good video with the simulator and all. And you might see that during the regular school year. Uh, we might be able to get that published and put out to you guys. But uh, I really wanted you to see that. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the time to get that done this week. So instead, you got me out here kind of kind of doing this stuff. So. But, um, so yeah, so here we sit and wait, but um, it's where that they need us here, so we're required to be here whenever there's a drop, it needs to be a drop to an officer or a team here, uh, depends how many people are here, depending on what they're dropping, if you drop larger training loads that are actual pallets, or containers that take multiple people to um, get back to, to Newcastle. We got to load them on a truck and a flatbed today. It's just a little you know, training bundle and a parachute. You see, it's not very large, so it's easy enough. Uh, even my son could handle it if he really wanted to. If he wasn't being lazy about it, he could, he could probably grab one. So, yeah, so we're um, just uh, the two of us here, here tonight doing this, this uh, mission. But, Coil DZ, Coil DZ, Castle 5-0, looking for a wind to clear us to drop. Yeah, Castle Flight, this is Coil DZ, winds are calm, you are clear to drop. You're having a hard time hearing me. Yeah, Castle Flight, you are clear to drop. Winds are calm. All right, so we were able to get a hold of them. They're uh, they're about six minutes out from the drop. We we're having an issue with the radio. But we were able to, to hear them. They copy back. You always, when you're on the radio, you always say who you are. Second, you always want to call them. So they are Castle Flight. That's their formation call sign, and they are coming inbound. So that's why I said Castle Flight, this is Quill DZ, because that's who I am. And then uh, we gave them winds. There are no winds really out here. Winds are, are like a knot, um, you know, and it's uh, really nothing. So we just call it Winds Calm. And uh, so they'll be in here soon. We'll come on when they're overhead, and uh, you'll see them see at least one ship fly overhead and try to, try to pick the training bundle coming out of the back of the airplane, try to see the parachute, follow it down, and uh, then we're going to go retrieve it. All right, so we're gonna play. We're gonna play game, kids. We're back here with you. We're gonna see who can pick out the airplane first. So you want to look off in the distance. This airplane is flying about 800 feet off the ground. Is what altitude they'll be doing this drop from? Different altitudes for different drops, different types of cargo, different weights of cargo depend on the altitude that they can be dropped at. So uh, they always brief it ahead of time. It's one thing big when you're doing this kind of flying is everything is brief before you get to the airplane. Uh, so they've already decided what altitude they're dropping at. We know their time they're dropping. 
Um, and they've already determined a position that they're going to let that cargo go. They're determining that right now. They're doing their final adjustments. They are lined up on that ram, that bright pink um, triangle that you saw that we put out earlier. So they know where that is, and that's where they're going to base their position on this drop. And they have to take winds into consideration at the altitude that they're flying, as well as the winds on the ground normally. Now, there are no winds on the ground today, so they don't have to worry about that. Um, but here they do come inbound. They're going to be coming in. They're about a minute out from the drop right now. They have a one-minute warning is what they normally call. Everybody acknowledges the one-minute warning so they can get ready to know that they're going to be dropping here soon. Some of us that fly a lot, we call that the sound of freedom, the sound of a C-130 flying over. But I'm partial. I'm a little bit biased to C-130. I love it. Try to look for that parachute coming out the back of the airplane. There it goes. I see it. You might see it coming down again. This is a small training load. This is to practice for when they got to drop bigger items. So they're just dropping the parachute, get it in position to get it to come down to the ground. That's a pretty good drop. That's pretty close to our ram. We're going to see how close it is when we get over there. So we're going to radio into the plane. We're going to head over to go ahead and get that. So, All right, everybody. So we found our parachute. We found uh, where it landed. It's about 100 yards off the, uh, the point impact. So it's not too bad. It's pretty good for training. Um, real world, you want a little closer than that. So this is just what we call a pilot chute attached to a training bundle, a sandbag. There's sand in there, so that's all that's in that one tonight. Again, very small, compact. My boy could lift it up, put it in the truck. Not a big deal, not too heavy. So we are basically concluding what we're doing tonight. So we have seen the airdrop, talked to you a little bit about the job that we do, the job I do. And um, as loadmaster, drop zone officer as well. So yes, I'd, I'd like to thank everybody for your attention. You know, we've kind of, and this wasn't as exciting as I wanted it to be. I wanted us to be in a simulator like we were, so you might see that down the road, but at least you're able to come up here with me, see an airplane fly over, do some training. Hope you learned a little bit about the Delaware Air Guard, military, um, some flying things, being a loadmaster. I love my job, been doing it for 23 years, and want to keep on doing that. So I'd like to thank you all for your attention and taking the time to watch this and listen to your teachers and, and do good here at the end of summer and take a break get back into its school year and if anybody has any questions about the military delaware national guard please just reach out uh, comment reach out to me I'd be more than happy to, to talk to you if you want me to come to school and we're back in school whichever but thanks again gate says thanks bye thank you for being here and we're going to go ahead and get ready for our night drop. Issue with night drop, can't see much. So we just did the one drop during the day. We're going to be here another hour and a half for them to drop again. And I want to thank everybody. Appreciate it. God bless America. Take care.